the urinary tract is sterile. Nurses should take care when managing patients and urinary problems and promoting hygiene. Nurses understand that growth and development factors will determine the patient's ability to control the act of urination, and the elderly patients need to deal with decreased functioning accompanying aging. They know weak abdominal and pelvic floor muscles impair the ability of the urinary sphincter to maintain tone. Immobility, muscle damage during vaginal delivery, and muscle atrophy or trauma contribute to problems with urination. Psychosocial issues such as body image, self-esteem, roles, and identity may also influence a patient's urination. Gender differences, including the males generally stand with peeing and females sit, can affect a patient's ability to urinate well. And cultural differences, including cultural differences may also dictate how and when a patient may urinate. In some cultures, patients urinate in the squatting position. When performing a urinary physical assessment, nurses must gather the information about the patient's normal urination pattern and symptoms and their factors that affect urination. The nurses conduct a physical assessment of the patient's body systems, including potential of Anything potentially affected by the urinary change, nurses assess the patient's perception of the urinary problems, its effects on self-concept and sexuality, and they gather relevant laboratory and diagnostic data as well as the characteristics of the urine itself. Physical assessment of the urinary system includes assessment of the patient's skin and mucosal membranes for hydration, turgor, and texture, assessment of the bladder for distension, assessment of the kidneys for flank pain, infection, or inflammation, as well as assessment of the urethral meatus for discharge, inflammation, or lesions. Assessment of the urine includes assessment of urine characteristics such as color, clarity, and odor. Urine color can be straw, yellow, to amber, and generally indicates the concentration of the urine. Urine is usually clear unless there's pathology present, such as urinary tract infection. The urine may have a slight ammonia odor, and different odors can indicate different pathology. Assessment of the patient's intake and output can be a good indicator of kidney function. Additional tests may be done, such as urine specimen collection or reagent testing. Urine specimen collection can be done in multiple ways. For example, a random urine sample, a clean voided or midstream catch, a sterile sample, which can be done through a straight catheter or an injection port, an aspiration sample through a Foley catheter, or a 24-hour timed urine collection sample, which must be maintained over ice with preservatives, and any specimen that is missed is considered invalid. Urine specimen collection can be done in different ways. Nurses can assess diagnostics such as urinalysis, urine specific gravity or the concentration of urine, urine culture, and different diagnostic procedures such as non-invasive x-ray or CT scan, invasive procedures such as cystoscopy or arteriography. Remember that each examination has specific indication and use, bowel preparation, and patient education. Some examinations will require signed consent form, and some will require injection of dye. The nurse will need to assess the patient's sensitivity to the dye before beginning the procedure.
endoscopy or cystoscopy is direct visualization and or specimen collection of the bladder or urethra. This can be done under general anesthesia. An arteriogram is visualization of the renal arteries with contrast that's injected intravenously while radiographs are taken in rapid succession. The nurse may need to assess the catheter insertion site, have the patient maintain bed rest, and encourage fluids after procedure to clear the dye. Examples of nursing diagnosis for patients with impaired urinary elimination include urinary retention, urinary incontinence, risk for impaired skin integrity, risk for infection, acute pain, or social isolation. Some nursing diagnoses common to patients with urinary elimination alterations involve a general goal that maintains a patient's normal urinary elimination. These goals differ depending on the cause of the problem. The nurse must consider the patient's home environment and normal routines when planning therapies or interventions to assist the patient. Nurses have several methods of promoting the matriculation reflex to help patients maintain normal urinary elimination. These interventions generally reflect the ability of the nurse to help the patient sense the urge to urinate or help the patient to relax the urethral sphincter. A patient's ability to void depends on their feeling the urge to urinate and being able to control the relaxation of the urethral sphincter. Nurses can help by assisting the patient in a normal voiding position. For example, a, war a woman is better able to void in a squatting or sitting position and a man is better able to void in a standing position. Other measures that help promote relaxation and the ability to avoid include sensory stimulations such as the sound of running water or the power of suggestion by pouring warm water over the patient's perineum. In the acute care setting, it is often difficult to, for the patients to avoid normally um, nurses can help by allowing the patient to have privacy and promoting relaxation techniques if patient has difficulty voiding. Medications such as parasympathetic medications can stimulate the nutritional muscle and aid in bladder emptying, whereas cholinergic drugs increase bladder contraction and improve bladder emptying. For patients with severe problems, with urinary elimination, catheterization may be indicated. Catheterization involves introducing a latex or plastic tube through the urethra into the bladder. The catheter provides continuous flow of urine in patients unable to control matriculation and in those with obstructions. Catheterization can be intermittent or indwelling. A catheter drainage system should be a closed system that's inserted sterilely and it's positioned to allow free drainage of urine by gravity. The nurse needs to an order to insert the catheter and after inserting the catheter, she must maintain a closed urinary system to reduce the risk of infection. Nurses provide perineal care at least twice daily for patients with catheters, and catheter irrigations may be needed if the catheter becomes occluded. When removing the catheter, the nurse should promote normal bladder function and prevent trauma to the urethra. The patients generally should be able to avoid normally after catheter removal. Suprapubic and condom catheters are used as alternative to indwelling catheters and suprapubic catheters require surgical placement of a catheter through an abdominal wall. 
Condom catheters are used for male patients with external genitalia and can be changed daily for patients with any form of incontinence. With intermittent catheter technique, the nurse introduces a straight catheter that's long enough to drain the bladder. After the insertion, the nurse immediately removes the catheter, and it's, this technique is commonly used in patients with spinal cord injury or neurological problems such as multiple sclerosis. These patients must be able to perform intermittent self-catheterization up to every four hours for months or even years. Indwelling Foley catheters remain in place for longer periods of time until the patient is able to void voluntarily or until continuous, accurate urine measurements are no longer needed. Coudé catheters are special types of catheters used on male patients who have prostatic enlargement. These kind of catheters are stiffer and easier to control than a straight-tipped catheter. Catheters, there are many different types of catheters in many diameters to fit the size and need of the patient. Condom catheters can be used if indwelling catheters or intermittent catheters pose too high of a risk for infection. Condom catheters are placed over the external genitalia and can be changed daily.